Thank you to Maddie Tavell for that beautiful speech. Um, next up, we have Daniel Inwood. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, hi, uh, my name is Daniel Inwood. I'm a Milburn High School graduate, a uh, queer person, a recent graduate of the College of New Jersey uh, two weeks ago, and now a current graduate student at the University of Chicago. Uh, I would like to thank Shiv's Third Eye, Sanaya Sankar, and Shilpa for graciously inviting me to this wonderful event. I too wish I would to something like this when I was a kid. Now, we are all here today to celebrate the lives of queer persons everywhere, to recognize the challenges and triumphs through which queer persons have endured, and to acknowledge the current socio-political climate to which queer persons are currently targeted. While I'm quite passionate about all these things, I thought it would be more interesting to tell you about my story rather than just tell you what I'm passionate about. From a young age, I did not really conceptualize the meaning or consequences of being queer. Because I preferred hyper-feminine things like vibrant colors, doll playing, all those sort of things, I was ridiculed by my peers. By the time I got to middle school, I was no stranger to homophobia. Boys in locker rooms calling me slurs, staring me down and shaming me to their friends. The combination of this sort of discrimination and the fear of just experiencing it every day distilled a deep fear to be who I am and to publicize who I was. At this young age, I did not have the resources I have today. I did not have a therapist, which is great to have now, queer role models and the abundant social support that I have. The lack of social belongingness and heightened alienation made me question whether I was worthy of succeeding in any way, psychologically, academically, even as just a person. I decided to finally come out my sophomore year of high school, which was met with both love from my friends, as well as trepidation and disdain from my peers. It was difficult but necessary for me to announce who I was, to make a statement of solidarity and strength. The true strength came from what followed, being both celebrated and hated allowed me the space and opportunity to explore what it meant to actually be me. Having only hate shielded me this experience. After coming out, I recognized that it was pivotal to seek social support from those around me as a buffer against the discrimination I currently face. And to do so, I followed fairly systematic steps. I started to come out slowly to those closest around me and eventually to those in my not so close circles. In doing so, I was able to really see who were my true allies, who would actually be there for me. In coming out, I even inspired those around me to be transparent about their queerness themselves. This relates to me that presenting myself is advantageous and it allowed me the opportunity to learn about those around me. Though worth acknowledging, I'm not advising anyone to come out just to see others' reactions. It is pertinent that one shares this information only when comfortable and ready. It is okay to explore, question, and doubt. All people across all identities do this. And it's your right to do so publicly or privately. Now, when I went to college, I expected to escape high school and find others that celebrated my identity. And I was a little bit wrong. My ways of searching for friends that were queer and were allies deviated from high school. It's a bit different of a landscape. This time, I needed to be much more meticulous and calculated as to which spaces, clubs, classes, and people I surrounded myself with. Even in these efforts to find these people, I still experienced the same homophobia, slurs, and microaggressions from K through 12. But this time, I was able to apply my experiences to science. I began psychological research with relevant labs at my undergraduate school to examine the roles of minority-based stressors on the psychological, social, and educational health of minoritized populations, whether it be students of color, queer students, or the combinations of both. Being able to, expl uh, being able to apply my experiences to theory and research and relate it to others gave me a sense of joy and pride. Now, with all these years of academic experiences of both joy and love and hate from others, I'm now proud to announce that I will become a PhD student in comparative human development and psychology at UChicago. My message I hope to share is this. There will always be those who cherish you and those who want to alienate you, no matter where you are. 
The most pertinent challenge is finding those who will celebrate you and your authentic self. Being who you are matters, and having those who appreciate you matters even more. Please know that queer communities exist everywhere, even in very unexpected places. It is my hope that all of you will find, foster, and forge these communities, straight, gay, queer, whomever you are. Thank you for listening and celebrating with me. Enjoy the day. Thank you.